it's now that time you've made up your mind you're going to start a poultry farm but you're not yet certain which of the types of chickens are you going to do you have zero down your mind it's either going to be broilers or layers but you're not sure which one is better for you as a beginner remember you're just a beginner you probably don't know too much you probably don't have too much money to spend but you're interested in this thing and you want to test the waters which one should you start with well, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing right that. So stick here right through to the very end. So first, we need to define what are broilers and what are layers. Well, in the exact definition of the word, a broiler is a young chicken whose meat is ready to be roasted. You know, usually we think about barbecue. If it's broilers, the idea in the head is barbecue. The meat is ready to be roasted. So it can be any kind of chicken. And usually it needs to be young. It shouldn't be very old because as it grows older, the meat becomes tougher and uh, it's not fit for barbecue. For barbecue, you want nice, tender, soft meat. But with time, the definition has completely changed. And clearly for the purposes of this video, that's not what you're going to consider. When it comes to the definition of broilers right now, commercially and what's widely understood is that broilers are birds which are kept for the purpose of meat. Someone raises the birds and the purpose for raising them is to have them sold or consumed as birds for meat and not for feathers and not for eggs, nothing else, typically meat. Now the thing with broilers is that technology has been advancing a lot recently. They have been genetically engineered, you know, on the breeder farms where they do raise the broilers from the grandparents' stock. They keep picking out birds with the very, very best genes, using the very best technology to make sure that these birds have all the attributes that can work towards having the test chest meat, number one, having them grow as quick as possible, having them convert the feed to weight as efficiently as possible so that it's economically viable. So if one bird, for example, will convert 100 grams of feed into, let's say, 90 grams of weight, that bird is more efficient than one that will convert 100 grams of feed into 85 grams of weight. That five gram difference on a huge scale actually means quite a lot. So there has been a lot of science and a lot of development going into that until we've reached this point. You know, right now in my country where I am in Uganda right now, you'll find people selling broilers at four weeks of age. I mean, four weeks of age, the things are ready for market consumption. Can you think about it? An animal, a chicken is produced and in four weeks, it's ready to be eaten. That's crazy, yeah? In some countries, of course, they'll keep them for a bit longer because maybe certain weights are not accepted. But right here in my country, it's allowed to have 1.5 kilogram as, you know, slaughtered weight. The bird has been slaughtered and it's ready to be sold. That's acceptable. And people can achieve that in less than five weeks, less than six weeks. It's really crazy. Now, when we come to layers on the other side of the coin, layers are birds that are very prolific at laying. Very, very prolific. It's very crazy because when you look at the indigenous chickens, they lay about maybe 180 eggs 150 eggs a year that's when they do really really well when it comes to layers commercial layers birds that are bred for egg production these chickens will lay 330 340 eggs a year that's really crazy now that means they will lay an egg almost every day every 26 hours a whole egg is formed inside that body as long as you give it all the nutrients it requires so they are really really efficient and they are literally money making machines that's why i call them my money making machines as a farmer now we'll also give a very brief mention to the dual purpose buds now dual purpose buds are buds that are meant for both egg production and meat production someone keeps them and they have both of these in target but they are not efficient at either if you give dual purpose buds a good layer meal you know you mix their meal and you know the ratios and everything to be like a layer feed they will will probably get to about 250 eggs a year maximum, 250 a year. So that means compared to layers, you're off by maybe 80, 90 eggs. And that makes a very huge difference, considering they even consume more feed than your commercial layer. By the way, commercial layers are bad that are usually smaller in weight. Yeah, you know, they're usually 1.6, 1.7 kilos. If it's two kilos, it's quite a lot, yeah? They're usually small birds, but they give you a lot of eggs. Unlike broilers that will grow to two kilos in just four weeks, these ones, by the time you're starting to produce an egg at 18 weeks, they're maybe 1.4, 1.5 kilos, but they're giving you all these eggs. It's really crazy. Also, the dual pass birds can give you meat, and also they're not like broilers. You know, for broilers, you'll get to two kilograms in maybe six weeks you know five six weeks with the dual pass buds you're going to get to two kilograms in about 12 weeks so they take about twice as much time as it would take for you with a broiler 
to get to this weight. So if you're a beginning farmer, you don't want a very tough landing, yeah? I know friends, people who started out their farms, but when they started their farms, they got a very tough landing. When you start a farm and you get a tough landing, everything is so complicated for you, it's so difficult, you can't figure it out. Usually, you end up assuming that farming or you know, this entire farming thing is just complicated, it's difficult, it's not nice. And a lot of times people actually end up giving up. So I would advise that, you know, if you're going to be starting a farm, don't start with complicated things. And so for this video, we're going to make it as simple as possible. You want to start with a simple landing so that you can learn very gradually, grow in confidence and understand how to actually make a lot of money through the chicken farming. So now we're going to look at different aspects of raising chickens generally and you're going to see which one is easier in broilers compared to layers. Which one is easier in layers compared to broilers. And so I'm going to give the winner of every category a two. A two being the one which is easier and then the runner-up will actually get one mark. Why not zero? Because for some people, there's nothing difficult about an aspect. You might consider it to be difficult, but for some people, it's not. So we don't want to give it a zero because it's actually manageable, but that's going to be the grading. A two for the winner and a one for the runner-up. So first, we're going to start with the management. Which one is easier to manage? Now, when it comes to management, there are two main things. Number one is the time, and number two, the difficulty of management of the birds. So. When we look at time, usually in just four or five weeks, you're going to be done with the entire cycle of managing broilers. Quick and easy, no wasting time. Five weeks, six weeks, if you're going to keep birds maybe on a free range system or in a system where you don't want to put on too much weight quickly because of particular reasons, then you're going to keep them for eight weeks. That's about two months maximum, yeah? So they take a really short time. Layers on the other side will take you up to 18 weeks before you start getting an egg. And the cycle can run up to 70, 80, 90, sometimes even 100 weeks. It takes a very long time to finish the entire cycle. So in terms of time, it's way, way easier to raise broilers and layers. And also when it comes to difficulty, you have way more things to do if you're raising layers compared to raising broilers. The brooding will generally be the same. Of course, the brooding will be shorter for broilers, but generally it will be the same. I would say it's even a bit more difficult in broilers because the brooder, usually broilers produce a lot of droppings. And so the chicken house will get a bit wetter. It's a bit more complicated to deal with. Uh, due to you know their wet droppings but you're only going to be in the brooder for two weeks and uh, in four weeks you're going to be done and then when you get done with that then you start doing all these other things in layers that you don't do for broilers you're going to have debeaking you're going to have uh, to give them different kinds of vaccines you know all these different vaccines so generally it's a bit more difficult to raise layers you know you're going to have to keep giving them dewormers it's a bit more complicated so when it comes to ease of actually raising the birds and also the time of raising the entire cycle, broilers are generally our winner. They are more beginner friendly, they are easier to start with and they'll get a two while our layers will get a one. All right, the next thing is vaccinations. Now I've already hinted on this, but when it comes to vaccinations, the broilers have just two main types of vaccinations, which you literally just repeat. The first one is Newcastle IB. It's usually one vaccine, which is a combination vaccine. Newcastle IB is infectious bronchitis, yeah? So it's usually a combination vaccine, and then you'll have Gumboro. You'll give each one of these about twice. The very first ones are given at the hatchery, and then the others are given only about twice each, and you're done, yeah? Usually by the 21st day, you're done with your vaccinations. You don't need to do too much after that. When it comes to the layers on the other side, you won't have way more vaccine it's going to start with the very first vaccination, which is going to be at the hatchery, luckily, which is a Merex vaccination. It's an injection. Unlike vaccines that you give to the broilers, you're either going to be giving them in drinking water, spraying, or doing eye droplets. When it comes to the layers, at some point, you're going to do all these ones you are doing for broilers, but you're going to have things like fall pox, where you're going to have to give a stab into the wing, you know, it's a wing stub. And then after that, you're going to have things like fall typhoid, where you're going to have to inject, you know, literally inject 0.1 mil or 0.5 mil, depending on the type of vaccine that you have, in either the thigh or the neck. And it requires a lot of technique, or maybe the breast. It requires a lot of technique because it can be very complicated. You can leave the vaccine in the wrong place. So generally, when it comes to vaccinations, again, it is simpler for broilers compared to layers. So again, our broilers get a two, and the layers get a one. All right, next up is going to be the market. So when it comes to the market, you're going to be marketing either meat or eggs. And I'll tell you the honest truth. It's way simpler to market eggs compared to marketing chicken meat. Now, it's not because it's inherently cheaper to market eggs, but it's because 
you can gamble around. You have room to gamble when it comes to layers, when it comes to marketing eggs. Because eggs, once produced, if you don't wash them and just uh, take them to the market, they can remain okay without getting spoiled for one month, a whole month. They don't need to be stored in a refrigerator, just being kept at room temperature. As long as the temperatures are not too high at room temperature, you can keep them for one month. What that means is that you have the room to look for the best market. If you go to someone and they're giving you a really terrible, pathetic price, you can tell them, no, that's too cheap. I'm not going to accept that price. I'm going to get a better price. You keep them at your home. Why look for someone to take them at a higher price? And then if the market disappears for maybe three, four days, maybe a week or even two, you're not so much on a panic that my eggs are going to get spoiled or something like that. The chickens are still laying my eggs and giving you more eggs. And well, you can keep them for almost a month and still be able to sell them. So they give you a bit less pressure to sell. And that means you can sell them for a bit higher because you're not on panic to sell for a lower price. Broilers on the other side, the complication with them is that as soon as the birds get to market weight, you're going to have to sell them. Every day that you keep them on the farm when you're not selling them, you're losing money because you're going to have to feed them, you're going to give them feed and the people who are going to come and buy them from you are not going to give you more money because your birds have gained maybe 2.5 kilos instead of 2.2. The 300 grams, if you're like, hey, pay for the 300 grams, they're like, we don't need 300 grams. All we need is 2.2 kilos. They'll be like, cut off the 300 grams. Of course, you can't do that. Or they'll tell you, we can go and get them from the other person. The other person only has them at 2.2 kilos and their price is cheaper. So you need to make sure you've got your market figured out. So the other complication you're going to face with that is that if you're not willing to do that, then you need to slaughter. That means you're going to into higher costs because you need to slaughter them. So you're going to get labor for slaughtering the equipment. Secondly, you need to freeze. So you're going to have to get a freezer and then you have to get electricity because you want to have to pay for electricity to freeze. So generally selling meat is a bit more complicated and more expensive than selling eggs. So when it comes to that, in terms of market, our layers get a two while the broilers get a one. Next up is the starting cost. So when it comes to the starting cost, there's a lot of things to consider. First is the chicken house. So a chicken house that can take X number of layers can take twice the number of broilers because when it comes to stocking layers you do about six birds per square meter that's the recommended for broilers you can do 12 sometimes even up to 13 birds per square meter so you only need to build a smaller chicken house when it comes to broilers compared to layers so the chicken house is certainly more expensive on the layer side. Secondly, you're going to need way more equipment when it comes to layers compared to the broilers. Way, way more equipment. The feeders, the drinkers, you're going to need to be doing the beaking, the brooding space and all those kinds of things. You're going to need roosters, you're going to need laying boxes. So it's certainly way more expensive to get all these things that you need uh, when it comes to the layers compared to the broilers. Also remember that you're going to pay for particular vaccinations. These vaccinations are way more when it comes to layers compared to broilers. And also don't forget that the cost, the actual cost of the bird is usually higher for layers compared to broilers. So generally, the cost of starting the farm is more expensive for layers compared to broilers. Also, we had forgotten about the feed. Yeah, You're going to feed these layers for about 18 weeks before they give you a single return. For the broilers, in five, six weeks, you're going to be selling them off and you're going to be getting back all your money and profit. So you're certainly going to need way more money, way, way more money when you're going to be doing layers compared to doing broilers. And for a beginner, honestly, the less money you put in, the better it is for you because that simply means less risk. It just means everything becomes simpler for you. So when it comes to the starting cost, our broilers, because they are cheaper to start in all the ways, will take a two and our layers will get a one. Next up is the risk. So just due to the fact that broilers are kept for a shorter time, simply means that you have a lower risk. You understand compared to layers for layers you're going to keep them for a long time you're going to put all this money into them and imagine they're going to get to let's say the 21st week and they get a disease maybe because you're not doing your biosecurity well in the 21st week they get sick they get a disease you're in trouble terrible terrible trouble because you've put in a lot of money or let's say they go to the 40th week you've put in a lot of money you still had literally half the life of the birds where you could have gotten money from a lot of this money you put in up to the 18th week you're expecting to be getting it back at this point and you're not getting it back at all so it's certainly way riskier for layers compared to broilers yeah so when it comes to the risk our broilers get a two because they are way less risky and our layers get a one. Then the other thing that you're going to consider is the profit. So when it comes to profit, we're talking about the entire project, yeah? 
you know, we're talking about margins here, percentages, not absolute value in terms of the amount of dollars you're going to be getting out of this. Just percentages, yeah? So, when it comes to the profit at the end of the period, layers will give you a higher percentage in terms of profit compared to the broilers. So they have a lot of stress, you're going to keep them for a very long time. They are more profitable though, they are way, way more profitable compared to the broilers, sometimes even twice as much as broilers in terms of profit. So in terms of profitability, our layers are going to take a two and our broilers are going to get a one. So yes, these are our six aspects in which you're going to be gauging the layers versus broilers for a beginner. And so if you've been totaling them up, you'll notice that the broilers have a total score of 10, while the layers have a total score of 8. And what that means is that, generally speaking, broilers are more beginner friendly compared to layers. If you're just starting out and you're looking for the simplest, the easiest thing to start with, one that won't give you too much risk, one that will enable you to learn, one that won't take too much money, then broilers are certainly the thing to go with. Layers are a bit more complicated, they take a longer time, they are riskier, but of course they give you more profit and for me personally when I was starting I went for layers simply because they give you more profit. I was willing to handle the risk, put in all the hard work, you know, save as much as possible to make sure that I can buy the birds and deal with the startup cost because for me the goal was to make more money. So just like I did, it's 100% possible for you to actually start out with uh, layers and make a lot of money. 100%. Make a lot of money, succeed, and not suffer too much because I've honestly even made a lot of videos for you guys on the channel. When I was personally starting out, I didn't have this advantage. I didn't have a lot of YouTube videos. On my channel alone, it's over 300 videos, most of them on poultry farming. So I would say, why not? Yeah, why not start out with it? Don't forget to hit the subscribe buttons, smash the notification bell. Catch you very soon with another video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.